In this video, I'm going to demo the power dialer and show you kind of the features and benefits. And also towards the end of the video, I'm going to walk you through how to get it, how to get signed up for it, how to get it set up. Before I talk about this specific dialer, I want to first briefly uh, share why we developed this dialer. As I was doing some research um, before we were doing this development, I learned that power dialers can increase your calling efficiency by three to 400%. Um, so typical agents will make 30 to 35 dial, uh, dials in an hour. And what we're finding with this dialer is that they're able to make a uh, hundred plus dials in an hour. Some of them more than that, depending on your efficiency. Um, so what that also means is way more appointments per hour. So most of our agents that we're talking to that have been beta testing this have, have gone from maybe one to two appointments in an hour to, five to six appointments. One guy said his record so far is seven appointments in an hour with the dialer. So um, just a, a tremendous time saver and just getting a lot more dials in less time uh, with the dialer. So with that, let me, let me go over what this dialer, um, how it's set up. Uh, on the left here, you'll see the client's information. All this information is what is exported out of opt. So address, phone number, um, to the right of that, you've got the health information. Some of that will already be in opt. Most of it probably won't be. Um, then to the right of that, you've got the script. So whether this is a mortgage protection, final expense, call-in script, all that can be customized. You'll notice that the client's information is right into the script. So you literally pretty much just have to read through the script um, and it'll insert the client's information there. Then to the right of that is comments or notes that you want to take while you're on the call. You've also got another tab here. It's the calling queue. So you can see what leads are scheduled to come up next in the dialer and you can skip ahead if you need to. To the right of that is your disposition. So what happened on this phone call? Was it a, did you schedule an appointment? Do you need to schedule a callback? Not interested, no contact. And then communication. Uh, you have the ability to leave a voice drop, so it basically leaves a pre-recorded voicemail while it's simultaneously moving to the next lead and dialing your next lead, so you don't have to waste any time leaving voicemails ever. You can email the client. We're actually adding a text message feature where you can text message the client. And then down below, you've got a calling history with any notes that you've taken, so you can quickly see how many times you've attempted to call this person, and if you have spoken to them, any notes about that conversation. Um, so while you're on the phone, you would simply just fill out, start filling out this information. Uh, for example, mortgage term, is it 30 years? Maybe their uh, mortgage payment is 2,200 a month. Beneficiary would be each other. And you just go down and start filling this out. So maybe this guy has diabetes and uh, insulin. Uh, spouse's information, spouse health and information. And once you're done, then you can simply put whether it's an appointment, callback, whatever. I'm going to say it's scheduling a callback or excuse me, an appointment. So we have integrated with Google Calendar. So if you haven't already done that, you're going to want to get um, signed up with Google Calendar. And once it once your appointments load, then you will at a glance be able to see not only when you're available, but when you're going to be in that area. So any appointments that are in green are appointments that are within a certain radius of the person that you have on the phone. So a lot of times agents will spend a lot of time pulling up Google Maps or MapQuest or whatever and try to figure out when they're going to be in that area and you no longer need to do that. Right now, I've got this set to a 15-mile radius. You can customize that. So you'll notice um, down at the bottom of that pop-up window, it says distance 9 miles, duration 20 minutes. So according to Google Maps, the person that you have on the phone that you're scheduling an appointment with is 9 miles from this appointment, and it's going to take you about 20 minutes with traffic to get there. So with that, I can say, okay, I know that I'm going to be in your area at 11 or, you know, 1230, I can meet, meet with you at 11 or maybe, maybe slightly after that. Uh, if they're in yellow, it means that they're more than the, than the predetermined radius. And I'll go into where you can set that 
set that up, what radius you want to notify uh, yourself for. Like I said, this is 15 miles. So you'll, you'll notice on this appointment, it's 54.55 miles from the person you have on the phone. And it's an hour and 10 minutes away. So if you have to schedule an appointment, at least you know, you know, this guy's 44 minutes away. So I'm going to leave myself a good 45 minutes to an hour or whatever to, uh, to get there if I need to book it at that point or, or down here if this guy's 52 miles, 52 minutes away, 39 miles away. So this makes it much easier. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to schedule this guy um, at 11. And this is an appointment reminder. This is actually going to email the client a notification of the appointment, the day and time of the appointment, and it's going to remind them an hour beforehand. That's a, again, that's a setting that you can turn on or off, which I'll talk about in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm going to create this event. Once I do that, I'm going to hang up with the client, and it's automatically going to load the next lead. Okay. That's you know, how long it took. Not, not too long at all. Now, let me talk about the settings. Uh, because once you sign up for a package, you gotta, you gotta get all of your settings correct before, um, before you're going to want to use it. So if you click on set, well, yeah, settings, you can put in your time zone, your appointment start and end time. Like what, when do you want to be available to run appointments? What duration do you want to, so I had an, an hour and a half, so you notice that block, the, the appointment blocks were an hour and a half blocks, but you can do anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours. Um, you can turn on or off client email notifications, so you can have an appointment confirmation go out immediately when the appointment is booked, and it's going to include a um, calendar attachment. So when that goes out, this is what it's going to look like. It's got your, it's a customized email. It looks like it's coming from you with your client's name, um, the area that they live in, the date and time of the appointment. Let them know that they're going to be 30 to 45 minutes. You could be 35 to 45 minutes early or late to the appointment. It's going to include this calendar attachment so they can easily insert it. And some emails will actually automatically insert the appointment into their calendar with that reminder already there. Um, but again, you can turn that on or off. And then you can also do an, a second email that goes out before the appointment. So right now this is set to two hours before the appointment, but you can set that to whatever you want. Then you've got agent notifications. So this is going to email you all the client's information once the appointment is booked. And what that looks like is right here. So when you schedule an appointment, it looks just like the qual client qualification form that you're used to filling out. It's got the client's info, um, you know, height, weight, all that kind of stuff. Notice that diabetes on insulin, none. Basically everything that you're, that you're collecting over the phone, any notes would go down here at the bottom. And you can simply just print this off before your appointment and take it in with you. Uh, you can also have an optional setting to email those to your manager. So if you're brand new and you need assistance on what products to write, then you can have this go to both you and the manager or just you. Um, there's two different dialing types. Click to dial was one that we were just looking at. So you simply would click on the phone icon next to the phone number and it's going to dial the client right away. So the agents that are using this, we've got one agent that's been using this for several months now and he said last week he made 288 dials in two and a half hours and he uses the click to dial feature um, another agent likes the auto dial feature and that you don't have to click anything for it to call it'll you just set up the settings right here so if you want it to call the cell phone three times home phone three times work phone once or if you want to change this to maybe it only calls the home phone twice then it will do all those automatically and I'll, I'll demonstrate that in just a second here then you've got the ability to have multiple caller IDs. So you can, you can either manually put it on one. So if you're doing a travel trip and you need a certain area code, you can set it to use that caller ID when you're calling that area code. Um, a lot of times 
agents will call through all their leads and then they want to rotate their caller ID, call through them again, rotate their ID, call them again. And you can do that automatically by doing auto switch. So if you have two, three, four, five different phone numbers, then you can simply put that on auto switch. And every time it loads that lead, it will switch the caller ID that it uses. So if it's calling the cell phone three times, home phone twice, work phone once, it's going to use the same number for all of that sequence. But then next time when it loads that lead, let's say you want to call them again in an hour, it'll recognize the caller ID that it used before and it'll use a different one that, uh, that time. Voice drop, you can, you can determine which number you want to leave the voicemail on. So when you're done calling, if you want to leave a voicemail, you hit the voice drop. Like I said before, it will leave a voicemail simultaneously while moving on to your next lead. So you're not wasting any time with that. Um, and then auto delay. So after the lead is low is, is uh, after you disposition a call, let's say you book an appointment and it loads the next lead. How long do you want it to wait until it starts ringing that customer? Maybe you want five seconds to look over the information before it starts to call them, or maybe you're, you're faster and you don't need any time and maybe you can look over the information while it's ringing. So that's a delay that you can set. Now this is the distance that you want to uh, determine which appointments show up in green. So this is set, I think the default is 10 miles, but you can set this to whatever you want and anything within that radius will show up in green anything outside that radius would show up in yellow. Um, let me talk about uh, the global filters. If you, are, if you want to filter and only call certain leads, then this is where you can do it. So if you're doing a travel trip or if maybe you work certain counties on certain days, then you can specify what counties um, you, want to, you want to work. So let's say um, I live in Tennessee, so I'm going to do green and Hamlin County. And now this is only going to pull in green and Hamlin County leads into the dialer. And maybe even, uh, even more specifically, maybe I don't want to call leads that I uploaded six months ago. I only want to call the ones that I uploaded in the last, let's say 30, 30 to 40 days. I could say, you know, when I'm recording this video, it's May 8th. So let's say I want to do April 1st to today and then I would just hit submit and now it's only going to give me leads in Green and Hamlin County between these that, that, that has been assigned to me during these the state range. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I'm not sure if I have any that meet that criteria. Now when you're setting this up you're going to want to click on my calendar. Now I've already connected my calendar. So I'm going to delete this setting <clears throat> just so I can demo it. You're going to want to put login to Google calendar, pick your email account that you want to use that you, for the calendar that you use and give it a few seconds and it will connect to your calendar. And there we go. So that's, uh, that's pretty simple there. Now, to get signed up for the dialer, actually, let me, before I do that, let me, um, you'll notice this blue, that's on, this is on a click to dial setting. Let me just quickly show you the auto dial um, or power dial option. So in this setting, it's gonna ring in that sequence. So if I click submit, I'm gonna go back to the dialing screen. And I've got, uh, this is my soft phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in here. I'm gonna turn up the volume. Okay, now if I hit start, it's going to connect me into the system. And let me Okay, so now if I click start, 
it should start ringing. Now I've got this uh, dialing music, which can be customized, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and click Start. Now when I do that, this is a phone number that I've that I have uh, calling, and it's just going to call through three times cell phone, three times home phone. You'll see down here in the bottom right, it's made one attempt. Right now it's calling the cell phone, 8742 number. Now it just hung up, and now it's dialing attempt number two. 8742 is ringing, cell phone again. Now what it's doing is it's only dialing for 20 seconds. The typical voicemail will pick up in 25 to 26 seconds. So it's going to call and hang up before it reaches voicemail. Okay, and now it just hung up the second time. So you'll now see attempt number three. And it's going to continue doing that. It would. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. And uh, it would continue doing three times sell, one time uh one time home and one time work, which there isn't one. And at the end of this call, I would just simply put, if they didn't answer the phone, I would just say no contact. And now you notice it just loaded the next lead and it would start uh, the dialing sequence again. I've already stopped it, so it's not going to do it right now. But that's, that's the, uh, the dialer. Now let me go back into the virtual mentor. And... What you want to do, you'll probably notice that there's only two options, payments and packages. So the first thing you want to do is select a package. Now the only difference between the basic and the professional is the number of minutes that are included. So a thousand minutes will probably be enough for somebody that's a part-time agent that's just getting started. Uh, if you're a full-time agent, you're probably going to want to get the professional package, which includes 2,000 minutes. Everything else is the same. Um, the $65 a month Manager package is for managers. It comes with additional reporting so that you can track the detailed activity of every agent in your group um, so you can be a better mentor and see, you know, how many dials are they, are they making, how many contacts are answering the phone, how many appointments are being set, um, and so on and so forth. Now, once you get signed up, you're going to receive an email that will look similar to this one, and it will have... Uh, a link to the soft phone. So the soft phone is this. It, it may look like this. This is Xlite, which is going to be used for Windows and Linux users. If you're a Mac user, Xlite does not work on a Mac. So there's a different, um, a different soft phone called Linphone. So you want to click on whatever, whatever operating system you have. Click on that to download the soft phone, and then. This is a user manual. Step two is download and, and open the, in the user manual and follow those instructions. And then step three, this is your personal unique information that you'll need to put into your soft phone to get it set up correctly. So everything that you would need to know to get set up and to use the dialer is in this, um, this user manual. Anytime I have someone that has issues or questions or something's not working right, it almost always is because they have not read through this user manual. So please try to do that before reaching out with any questions. Um, but this is going to walk you through not only how to download the soft phone, but how to get it all set up, where to put your information, um, how to edit any scripts. So if you have a certain call in lead script or a mortgage protection or phone expense script that you like to use, you can uh, modify those scripts. This is how you can export your leads from opt and get them imported into opt. Make sure that you read this carefully because the default info that's exported out of opt is very limited and it's not going to include things like your lender, the loan amount. Um, most of the stuff that's here is not going to be in the default. So you've got to actually add those fields to the export template. And this will walk you through exactly how to do that. There's also a video right here. Um, that you can watch that will walk you through step-by-step step on how to do it. Um, this is also going to 
talk about call forwarding. So let me, let me um, run through that really quickly here. And there's going to be more stuff that you'll probably want to want to go through in that, that uh, manual, but the caller IDs, some people want multiple caller IDs. Once you sign up for a package, it is going to ask you what call, what area code do you want your caller ID to be from? Okay. It'll give you the option to buy one of them when you're signing up for a package, but you can click on color IDs once you're signed up and you can buy additional phone numbers. But let me show you, show you something really quick that some people have questions about. If you want a specific area code, then you'll need to search for it up here. So some people say, well, I've looked through these numbers and I don't see my area code. You can completely ignore all these numbers that are listed down here until you've done a search. So if there's, um, let's say you're looking for a specific area code, do a search, and then it will give you several, I think 30, 30 options. If you don't see any that you like, um, so for example, I live in Johnson City and I don't see any Johnson City here, I can do a search and I can look for more. If I still don't see it, I can do another search. I can just keep hitting search until I find one that I'm looking for. Now, once I find caller IDs and I purchase them, you want to set a forwarding number because by default, there is no forwarding number, which means when somebody calls you back, it's not going to go anywhere until you tell it where to go. So you want to click on follow me, put in your phone number or cell phone or something that you want it to forward to when someone calls you back and you want to do that for all of your phone numbers. If you click on reports, then you can look at specific dialing reports. So there's three different reports. One is a detailed report. So you can look at exactly who you've called. And this is in most recent to least recent. And you can see how many dials you've called that person, whether they answered, uh, the disposition that was done, you know, was it an appointment, was it no contact, and then any notes that were taken. This is really helpful if you have somebody that's assisting you with appointment setting and you want to see what they've done or what the result has been. You can see exactly who they've called, what the notes were, and that type of thing. If you want more of a summary, then this is where you can look at daily, weekly, monthly, or annual calling activity, um, kind of from a bird's eye view. So if I want, let's say, a weekly report, then I can see the week of, um, let's say, May 8, there were seven dials, and obviously this is a demo account, so there's not a lot of calling activity on this, but... May 8, there were seven dials, five people answered the phone, booked five appointments, um, and, you know, any callbacks, not interested, blah, blah, blah. I can also do a routing queue. So what are, what are the leads that are scheduled to come up in the, in the queue at this point? So it's always going to put your freshest, newest leads at the top of the queue, at the very front. Once you call them, it puts them in the back of the queue. So if you upload hundreds of leads, that may not be the best strategy because it, it's, it's always going to, once you call that person, it's going to put them in the very back of the queue. Now you can always add a filter and just say, I only want to call the ones that were assigned to me, you know, in the last month. Um, but just understand that it is going to put the newest ones first and then put them at the end of the queue to get recycled. I think that's about it. Uh, like I said, there, there is another video that you'll want to watch on how to export and import your leads. Uh, so I won't cover that in this video, but if you guys have any other questions after reading through the manual, if you can't, uh, if you need help with something or something's not working, just in this comments and feedback section, just put in your information here, put, you know, write, write an email. I'll get this in an email. Just fill that out and send it to me and I'll be happy to help you out in any way that I can. But hopefully this, Dialer will be extremely helpful uh, for you guys and increase your efficiencies and appointments. And uh, I look forward to hearing any feedback that you guys have once you start using this. Any testimonials, good or bad, I'd love to get that feedback. So uh, thanks a lot for watching the video and look forward to 
hearing some good stuff from you guys. Thanks a lot.